several big developments impacting the Boeing 737 MAX 9 air aircraft. This after a mid-air emergency forced an Alaska Airlines flight to land just minutes after taking off. Let's go to NBC's Priscilla Thompson, who's joining us now from Houston. Priscilla, tell us what happened. Yeah, Alex, well, we are just learning that the FAA is ordering certain Boeing 737 MAX 9s to be grounded if they are operating in the U.S. We learned a short while earlier that United was also planning to do that, and it comes as those NTSB and FAA investigators are on the ground in Portland, Oregon, trying to figure out what went wrong with this Alaska Airlines flight overnight. You see the video there of that massive hole. It appears that an entire panel on the side of the plane was ripped off in mid-air. We've seen video of the oxygen mask being deployed throughout uh, the cabin and that wind just rushing in through that opening as passengers were sitting on that plane. And our affiliate there spoke with some of those passengers after they got off the plane about what those moments were like. And I want to play a bit of what one of those passengers had to say. It shows you how structurally strong those planes are. You could blow a hole like that because the hole was about as wide as a refrigerator and about two-thirds as high when I finally got to see it later. Everything went swell. Um, like I said, the cabin crew were, did an excellent job. Pilot did a great job. Um, can't say anything bad about them at all. Certainly some very scary moments, and this happened just minutes after that flight took off uh, in Portland, Oregon, headed to Ontario, California. Thankfully, no one on board was seriously injured. There were some personnel items that were lost after being sucked out of that window, but thankfully, everyone there safe. And already this morning, Alaska Airlines announced that they were grounding all of their Boeing 737 MAX 9s until they had an opportunity to complete uh, maintenance checks and and safety inspections. They have just said that around a quarter of those inspections are done and those uh, planes did not have any issues are now back in operation, but they are continuing to do that work. And as we learn that the FAA is calling for uh, a much broader grounding of those planes, it remains to be seen how exactly this is going to affect travel today in terms of cancellations and flight delays. Alex? Yeah. Um, you know, Priscilla, um, stay with me as I ask our director, Renee, to put back up the, the, the photo that we have. It's of that plane from the exterior. We can see it. You look at that panel that has gone out. I mean, it looks like a very smooth uh, perimeter, so it's not like it was a small window that got blown out or, I mean, you see some debris there kind of hanging off the side, but it looks like it's an actual panel that... Let's see, I, many, many questions can go here. Was it shut properly? Was it, as the uh, pilots indicated, a air pressurization thing that happened as a result of this blowout or that happened before, which would you know indicate if it wasn't shut properly? A lot of times you have cargo loaded, but that's way too high for cargo. Is there anything you are learning about what that particular door was used for, Priscilla? Yeah, I mean, that is the big questions. The passengers on board said that it wasn't an emergency exit or anything like that, but that it just hmm. appeared to be sort of this extra door there. And as you mentioned, we heard in the air traffic control them talking about a possible pressurization issue that may have caused this. But as they continue to sort of figure that out, just certainly very scary moments for those passengers. Some people saying that there was a teenager sitting near that, uh, near where wow. that happened and that his shirt was ripped off and that a cell phone was also pulled out of that opening. And again, you see in the video just that wind blowing people's hair. And you can imagine how scary it is to be on a plane, literally looking out at the ground, but some 10,000 feet beneath you. They had just climbed to 10,000 feet when this happened, and they had to make that emergency landing. Alex? Yeah, you make a good point. They hadn't gotten up to maybe 30,000 feet, which can be a cruising altitude. So 10,000 feet uh, allowed for a little bit better recovery, that's for sure. Okay, Priscilla, I'm letting all of our viewers know we are efforting an interview with an FAA investigator. We'll get to that as soon as we get him on the line.